All right, folks, how are you this evening? Well, I am, uh, it was snowing out pretty good, so I figured what I would do today is start wiring up some of these lights in here. <clears throat> I'm just cutting some little, uh, little grounds so I can pigtail them together. It's a little short, that one, but I will use that one. Um, the one thing I'm going to do is change. Do you have that bit I handed you a few minutes ago? Thank you very much. Yeah. You remember it? I, I did. Turn this so you can see. So I called, I called one of the local wiring places here. I can get away with plastic conduit on the inside. No law against that. I do not need box connectors with those boxes I have, okay? And I'm going to leave the boxes here in case we ever do a drop ceiling to hide stuff. So that's why I'm not going to recess the boxes. So, our codes are a little different than in the US. We do need an inspection, which I already knew, to get hooked up. We do need, before I even mount my electrical panel, I have to uh, buy a permit and they will come out and do a layout for us and tell us exactly where the panel, where they want it, on what corner, which I know is going to be over in that corner already, I know that for a fact, but I'm going to make sure, I don't want to wire all this and then find out I'm not supposed to. So I do not need a wire loop outside the box here, from what I understand that is not code, although I am going to leave a little extra outside just in case. There is no law against making the, the wires tight like that. There's no law against, like, like you folks said, there's no law. It's not code, it's just good practice. I mean, like they said, as long as you don't damage the cable, there's no law against doing a 90 degree angle in it, which we all know it's not like a water hose. It's not gonna pinch the power off going through it. They said it's just, they said it looks neater. They just don't advise people doing it. And because if people are rough, they can end up busting the wire but it's not a sharp 90, it's kind of a soft 90, so they said that's fine, they're, they're, not, gonna, they're not going to fail it because of that. Um, a minimum of six inches hanging out the box like I, I knew, so I usually do eight inches. When I, other, when I wired the other house, it, it was fine, um, and it was past too, so anyways, uh, and I wired my old house too, but the codes have changed, so I have been checking in different codes to make sure. Now the codes have just changed last year. They added a few revisions, but it's nothing serious. Now I was never planning on using an electrical box like this on the outside. You know it has to be a plastic box and it has to be a waterproof box with the gasket. Same as the outside electrical receptacles here, they changed the rules last year as well. Uh, we can't use... Uh, the old style boxes, the old style covers, which I knew that as well. It's like I say, when I did the house last year, two years ago, that law was just coming in. Our receptacles, they have to have these plastic tabs, they have to be tamper proof. I knew that too as well from, from last year when I did the other, or two years ago when I did the other place, I knew that. There's a few things I wasn't sure of. And I like to get your folks' ideas as well, so that's why I ask, it's because some things I don't know. But I knew we had to have a minimum of six inches hanging out the box. I didn't, I didn't think about having a little bit of extra up there. As long as the wire does not come within, I think, an inch or two of the floor. It can be looped, but you know they, want it, they don't want it flopping around, obviously. So I left a little loop over there. You probably can't see it, but that's neither here nor there. So that's where I'm at today. Now, Heather and I did a few other things today. As you probably see, it stormed here all day. I caught the tail end of the storm. It was pretty bad. But we have enough wood in here for a couple days, so we're doing good. 
Uh, we're probably going to go to our wood lot tomorrow and get some more firewood for something to do. Uh, we're going to wire these lights, probably do the, the, the light switches tomorrow perhaps. Um, and then what else? Oh yes, we're going to get the plastic conduit too. And we're going to put our light switches, we're going to run plastic conduits as long as it's up into the joist like they say. Uh, that's good as well. So uh, anyways, I called today. Won't be getting the electrical panel for a while to run these wires too because they are expensive. Without the breakers, it just comes with a main breaker, um, a 64 circuit breaker, so I can fit roughly 64 breakers as long as they're not doubles. A 64 circuit breaker panel here is about $330 before tax. But that's no big deal. Uh, next month or the month after we'll get that. But we'll just do as much wiring as we can in here. And I won't, I'll run everything to the last light switch and then I just will run it. You know, uh, when I'm ready to do it, I'll run a wire from the panel. I'll run down to, to a few boxes and then to that light switch and then, uh, then these will be all done. So for now, if I have to, once we get all these done and the, and the light switch is hooked up, the three-way light switch, because I know you need a light switch at the top and the bottom of the stairs, I know that. Every entranceway like this has to have a light switch, uh, has to have an outside light, weatherproof box, which I knew, and it also has to have a receptacle outside as well of an entrance in a waterproof box. And it has to be GC, GFI, GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter. Either has to have the breaker like that or the plug the, or the receptacle has to be GFCI which that's, we knew that from last year we did it. And when I did my house years ago too, I wired it twice in fact. I wired it once and then did the same thing. I lifted up and put a basement on it, so it's not my first rodeo. So the panel used to be upstairs on the old house. When I lifted up, I put the panel in the basement and then I had to rewire it all and get it done because I didn't want to have the hydro shut off for a while. But we call it hydro because we call it hydro here because our electricity is produced by water, water dams, so it's called hydro. Most places where it's done by nuclear, obviously it's not hydro, it's called electricity. Probably nuclear electricity, I'm not sure what they would call that. But uh, anyways, ours is produced by water, by dams, so they call it hydroelectricity. So there you go. Um, anyways, I'm gonna get that box changed. I'm gonna put a new one in there because these old ones are kind of grungy. And you can't have, which I knew, you can't have any openings here. And if it's a round opening, it has to have um, a box connector, one of those one of those connectors that thread in here that you can clamp. And by the time I priced those, they if they were a few of them were as expensive as a box, so you can't go wrong with a new box. Now I'll show you here. I, I showed you this yesterday, but I'll get another box out and I'll show you here. So when I break these tabs out here, these tabs are for the small wires to run into. These, so I don't need a box connector in here. They got their own little clamps inside. Set, they got their own little clamps in there. So I don't need a box connector. The wire would just run through here and get clamped by that. Uh, but if I pop these out, then I would need one of those large connectors. You can either get them that bolt on here with four screws, or you can get them that thread in. You get metal ones, plastic ones. But uh, I've, the reason I bought these, I decided to kill two birds with one stone. I have all these, all these uh, bolts here, the screws to hold our lighting fixtures in place. As you can see, I've already installed one up here. It's probably hard to see. But anyways, there's one up there already installed. So I'm just going to carry on up jungle. And I know not to cover, I know before the inspector comes, I know I can't close up the walls. We, like I say, I've done this before. There's a few things I wasn't sure of different rules, but it seems like not a lot has changed since the last few times I've done this. Um, but I got some really good, really good suggestions from my last video and I really appreciate that. Uh, what else now? I think that's about it. So anyways, that's why I went with other boxes. Oh, I didn't know what people ask why we're going on the grid. It's like I say, it's close. It's so inexpensive to get. Why wouldn't I? I mean, why wouldn't I get it? We don't have to use it, but if it's here, we can use it. But if you need it and it's not here, say if I have a stroke or a heart attack or even I pass away, what's Heather going to do? I can't be selfish and just want to be off the grid for myself. Heather would be happy being off the grid too, but if something ever happened to me, 
how would you figure that out, Heather? How would you rewire that? <laughs> would you be able to handle rewiring that? Probably not. Probably not. No. I, I, can, I can look back at your old videos, maybe. Yeah. Do you think that would explain much? Though? No. Like I don't. Like I. I know. Like I. I definitely understand where you're coming from with it. I want you to be. But you don't have. Like I. I know. I get what you're saying, and it's good. It's nice of you to. Yes. Think. I of want me. you to be taken care of if something happens to me, because if something goes wrong with that that charge controller. Are you going to be a lord or a new one and hook it up? In all honesty, no, no, no. And <laughs> See your face. <laughs> no, I understand that, but that's why I'm doing this. So it's nah. no, you, you <clears throat> but you look at the freezer. How much meat and vegetables did you put in that freezer last year that I lost? And you lost. Yeah. And it was because we could not afford to put gasoline in the generator to run it. And even when we put it outside, it was uh, it, it was cold enough. It, that's correct. Yes. And, yeah, I know. And our inverter wouldn't run it. We don't have enough. Now look at this here. Look at how much power we have in here, and nothing's running in here except the light right now. Eleven point eight volts. And we didn't. We oh, ran the generator today. It'll show up. I'm sure I did it. It didn't look like it showed up last night. Oh, the it, it screen. did. Okay. Yeah, through the viewfinder, but it did. So, anyways, we're at 11.8 volts right now. Yes, I could go with a 24 volt system, like people suggested. I could go with lithium ion batteries. I could go with a, a nice generator that's cheap on fuel. But what's the cost of all that? And even if I do get all that, after spending all that money. And we don't have enough power even because I'll, I have to upgrade my my inverter to a 24 volt one or even 48 volt. I know obviously the higher volts you go on your batteries, the more efficient your system is because it does not have to step it up. Each, each time you go up from 12 volt, 24, 36, 48, each time you go up 12 volts, it's easier on your charge controller because, because when your volts come in, it doesn't have to step it down so much to the higher voltage. So your cables can run further, your panels can be further away, you can mount more panels and your charge controller can handle it more because it's not trying to, to funnel all that high voltage down into 12 volt batteries. And I know once you go 12 volt, 24, 36, 48, whatever, 72 even, then it's even more efficient because it's not as much of a step from 48 volts to 120 volts. But there is a big step from 12 volts to 120 volts. So that's why it's way more efficient to go with larger battery banks. Lar larger volts, I should say. And if I went with 48 volts I, or 24 volts, I could go with larger batteries. But that is another cost. I know a few folks have priced a lithium-ion battery lately. But Heather and I would be saving probably for the next year to buy two lithium ion batteries. And then if we want to go 24 volt, we'd be saving another year or two to buy a decent inverter that was, you know, I mean, it's just, and if something happened to me, could Heather figure this out? Probably not. But you know what she can figure out? <laughs> it's how to go online and pay a bill if she had to. So I would have that security. That's what I would have. And my life insurance would help Heather keep going. So that's the thing that would happen. So that's why I'm getting electricity. Something never happens to me if I have an accident. She can still take care of me. Say if I, say if I, say if something happens if I fall and break a hip. <laughs> I fall and I can't get up, so to speak. <laughs> you know, that's not funny. But still, if something happened, if we had electricity here, Heather would not have to take all this on. She wouldn't have to get outside and shovel off the panels while she's trying to take care of me. If we got a barn going, then we could have a heat lamp in, in the barn. How many eggs did we waste last year that we were trying to hatch out because we didn't have enough power? Um, 12 or 24 was, of them? Yeah, something like that. Because I can't remember how many were in the incubator. It was full, I yeah, think. Because the power went out in the middle of the night. Yeah. And we couldn't run those nice greenhouse lights that were sent to us because we did not have enough power. So that's going to change, folks. Well, I know it's... um. I know uh, it'll be nice. Like I know you, you want it a big, like, big time too, because you'll be able to do a lot of stuff with it yes. as well. Like absolutely. You, you, I want to run my welders. Yeah. 
I'm gonna be able to run my plasma. I want to be able to run a decent compressor like I had years ago. There's all kinds of stuff we can do with it. And you know, if we go away, and if we're worried about the power here, we just turn on an electric heater. If we're worried about the heat, turn on an electric heater. It'll keep things warm in here. We don't have to worry. If we're gone for for a day or two, we take the dog. If we go. Um, we can put a small heater out in our barn that we're going to build. There's all kinds of possibilities. And it is so close to us too. It's The poles are 430 feet away from us. And the conduit to run 400 feet. So Ontario Hydro pays for the first 30 meters. So really I would only have to pay for 330 feet of that cable. So 400 feet of that cable, I priced it, is $1,800 Canadian less than two thousand dollars for that that cable but i only have to go 330 feet because they paid for the first 100 feet i mean that's probably the price of maybe three or four lithium -ion, maybe even two lithium ion batteries or one i haven't priced them in a while something decent size so so that's my reasoning i mean no more wasting gas with the generator unless the power goes out but see these here things though these things could be charging all the time if we had hydro and we only turn on to the electrical grid when we need it. That's what we're thinking. Yeah. So, uh, and the bill is not high compared to what we're spending now. Anyways, I've rambled on enough. I've already explained this before. So I hope you folks get it. And I know a lot of you do get it. I know a lot of older folks understand what I'm talking about. If you have it, why not use it? If it's a small bill, use it. Yeah, that's, that's all I can say. So anyways, I'm going to get this up here and I'm going to show you how it's going. Did I? Yes, I did leave the screws here. So I back off all these first. I back these off. This is already backed off pretty good. I don't want to go too far. Or else it'll fall out. And nobody wants a screw loose, do they? I've already got one. Sorry. And then I threw it. Yeah. Oh no. Not you. So anyways, this is going to go like this. I'm going to go right up here. Oh, and like I said too, that's the other reason I, 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 if I do any kind of ceiling, it'll be a drop ceiling. Can you pass me that screw from down on there, babe? I believe it fell on the ground. Oh. Something made that go crooked and I'm not sure what. That's straight road. That made it stand up and take notice. Mm -hmm. So now what I am going to do... I get my pliers. Um, my long pliers here. This knife, the cutters, this bare wire, this one's longer, okay, this bare wire, a Mars connector, a measuring tape, the wire strippers, now, this is the way I've always done it before. And from what I understand, it is still code to do it this way. A little piece like this for the ground. Now I won't wire, I won't run a wire for the light switch yet that's going over here. But I will eventually do that. So this gets clipped right in here and I'm sorry if it's hard to see folks. So that is there. Now that, how long are we? Should be long enough. If not, that one's easy to change. I'm not worried about that. But I think it'll be lots of long enough. Now here, I can come out the side on this. There's no law against coming out the side on this. It doesn't have to come out the top. The side is fine. That clamp is backed way off. I run this through here. Bring it down. We have eight inches there already in the box. Done this a few times, so 
Now I pull it through as the clamp goes up. There, good. Measure it again because sometimes it'll pull it up. I mean, even at that, it's okay. Yeah, we got over eight inches, so that's good. Now this here, I just pull that through and loop that up like that. And I still have a bit of play if I need it. Now I take my little box cutter knife here. Well, not a box cutter, it's a hook knife. I used to use these for roofing, you know that? These hook knives. Hmm. They were for cutting. We used to use them lots for cutting. Uh, tar paper, mostly the torch on roofing we used it for. Oh. So now that's run like that. I was just guessing, I wasn't actually like sure. I just, yeah, that's okay, it was <laughs> a good was guess. a wild guess. Now I cut the insulated coating off here, boom. That's gone. Now I take my wire strippers here. I'm gonna get this ground over to here because I'm gonna need that. Strip a bit. We do some more stripping here. Ooh, da -da -da. we're getting crazy. Yep. Yeah. Want some music? <laughs> Maybe later. Now this gets bent like this. Like this. Now I brought this over as well. Now I know there's going to be, there may be a wire run over there to a light switch. I'm not sure, I may have it, I may just have the wire run from a receptacle up to that light switch over there and then across to here and I may not have anything coming in here. So I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to open up any openings in here at all. So that's good. Now. I just coil that around and I stick that up and there out of the way right now. Make sure it's out of the way so it don't come down and touch on those wires. Now I'll get a reset, I will get a light. Right here, here's a light. Ding ding. Now I need my other little bit here. That's a smaller size bit. And they fit right in here. Now, the black wire, black on brass, white on silver, always the same. Unless, well, light switches, three-way light switches can be different, but I'll show you that later. I'll put my little bit here. I'm just going to tighten this one up a little bit. Not too much, because the last thing I want to do is to, have to bust that tab. So black on brass, white on silver. So the silver, I make sure which way it turns and then I loop it that way so it doesn't unroll that wire when it goes in there. See, it'll actually try the wrong way. You want it to wrap that wire around when you tighten it. You don't want it to try to push the wire out is what I should say. So I'll get this in here. So that's the way I do that wire right there. And this here gets threaded in there. There we go. This one, it gets threaded this way. So it goes in like this as well. Right in here like this. Beauty. There we go. And then I just take these and bunch them together, stand them up like this. Now you just stick enough of that wire up in there to make it look good. Now a lot of these here, a lot of these tabs, a lot of these screws are bent out sometimes. You gotta bend them in I find because they don't wanna fit these plastics. Some of the cheaper plastic um, lighting receptacles like this, sometimes they don't fit too well. So I wanna get those bent into place where they're not gonna bust anything or bust off, but I don't score the wire anyways with my strippers I use. Now, now you see that don't want to fit, does it? So, <laughs> that tells me that those are bent out a bit, so I just take these, um, bend them in a bit there, and bend these tabs. It's best to bend the tabs themselves, not the nuts, not the bolts of course, but I think I bent the tabs, not the bolts. We're going to see here. Yeah, see that? Fits just like perfect. Give them a little twist like that. 
and up they go, and that is one light done. Don't over tighten them because you will bust these. They're good. What did I just drop? My black, my tires. So that is not going to unthread now when I turn in a light, and that's what you want to do. You want to grip that and give it a good turn to make sure if you get a light bulb tight in there, when you unthread it, you're not going to unthread that whole piece. It's going to be the light that unthreads. So I'm going to put a light bulb in there, and we are going to test it, folks. You probably want to know how we're going to test it. Well, I'll tell you exactly how I'm going to test it. Ooh. As I draw from the tree. I got it. Here's a light bulb. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going, to, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to bring some stuff over here and strip it back. I need this right now, my ladder. I have no doubt it's going to work. I mean, okay. something on top oh, there, a little bit, right? Yeah, I grab, I'll grab it. Awesome, thanks. So, oh, it's not too, too dark over here. I'm just going to strip a little of this back here right now. Obviously, most people wouldn't do this because I already know it's going to work, but I want to show you folks. That's all. Done. This one, strip that back, strip that back. I don't like leaving anything on that ladder in case it comes down and hits me in the head. We need an extension cord. Let's grab this one here. you to test your lights at home like this or anything because it is not safe at all. Oh, I just hit that little button there. That... The only thing I hate about that inverter, they have that reset button so close that you hit it all the time if you plug something in. And like you're saying, this isn't safe. Like, don't No, do don't do this at home. What do you think of that? See, look over there. Ready? She's going to be on. I'll see if I can get both of them in the same shot. Sure thing. See that? Uh, I can't get them both in. That's okay. Just walk over to them. Good enough? Yeah. So oh, there, I can get it here. So I'll unplug it. Mm -hmm. There. Plug it in. There. Mm -hmm. Beauty. Now I'm going to start wiring the box over here now. And that's all there is to it, folks. Just that simple. Like I say, don't do this at home. It's not safe. I do it because whatever. Just to show you, folks. And I'm not scared of electricity, and you should be scared of electricity. I'm scared of it. I'm not. I mean, it's nothing to brag about either. I just, I just played it all my life that well, maybe I take chances. I've got shocked a lot. I think that's why I'm scared of it now. Sorry, have your hair? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just birth. What's that? No, I had this from birth. Oh, that's good. I like your hair like that. I like it. I love it. Now, I'm not going to use this box up there because that box is going to be way too heavy. So I'm going to use this electrical cord here for the light. And I'm just going to hook this. See, see, this is why I didn't want too much wire hanging 
because I always end up using it for stuff like this. Did you know that? Hmm? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell anybody that. Wait, show them your shirt. That's the... Uh... Oh. Another one that I got for him for his uh, for Christmas there because of his dancing me. on the cupboard when <laughs> the I cupboards when I'm the countertop. Yeah, the countertop yeah. one's gone and some of them probably <laughs> haven't seen that before, but it's, but that video is called my cat like reflexes mm -hmm. I think right save me again. <laughs> but she caught me on the video. That's back when I didn't even watch the videos so much. <laughs> Turns out she does. Okay, where's that bit? Thanks, Darla. You're welcome. Okay, okay, okay. Oh well. What do we have for volts now? Still 11.8. Not too shabby. Oh, we put the screws over here. Uh oh, um, right here. I see them. Right here. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry about it being so dark, folks. We will have lights down here shortly. Even if I just have to plug it into an extension cord, we will still have lights. I mean, this, the wiring of this had to happen even if, we are, even if we're not going on the grid. But we will have it as a backup, like I say. Now, I know my wires are gonna run that way so these little openings, see these guys here, these uh, clamps? Mm -hmm. I face them to the way they're going to run next. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone's thinking. Someone's thinking. They'll try not to make it a habit. I look like it's a little crooked there. It's so bloody tight. Right there. Okay, now I'm going to back this ground off here again, as you seen me do earlier. Back off that, back off the grounding screw. See that? The clamps are backed off, the grounding screw is backed off. So now before I do too much of this, I have to take that wire and I have to run it. I'm going to run it over the beam and hook it down into here and staple it so I know where it has to go. First of all, I need my tools. I need my pliers, I need my wire cutters, the knife, and I also need a strip of this long enough to hook the ground together. Right there. Right That's already stripped back. I did that already, right? Is there enough? No, there's not enough stripped back. Take this, 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 and this little bit. I'm going to set this up here so watch it don't all come crashing down on you, Heather. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get another one of these new receptacles from over here. I 
I want to thank Paul and Dorothy Schock for bringing these up because he had them left over and uh, he said he wasn't going to use them so he brought them up and dropped them off so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Very nice of them. Yep. So now I want to give this a curl and I want to do the ground right away. bit and that a bit so it fits up in there and that's my little ground see it slipped out I had the opening too much here See the, uh, that opening was too wide. So, make it tighter. Open this up a bit here. Slide that through. And then I go. Tighten that up. Now I'm not going to Mars connect that at all yet because I have another wire to tie into that. What I am going to do, and there's not enough room to wire to run the wire in the back of the box, so that's why I'm going in the side. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it makes no difference. Bring it through. Pull it down and make sure I have eight inches of wire again sticking through. There we go. There's eight inches. There's just over eight inches because when I screw that up, I know I'm going to lose some. There. That's way more than eight inches sticking through there. Six to ten is what you need. That's, that's uh, what they ask for. <clears throat> Just so you can pull that receptacle down and work on it if you have to. Oops, sorry. There. There we go. Now I'm going to strip this back a little more. Good enough there. What I have to do now is cut this insulate, insulating the coating back. Very careful you don't cut the rest of the wires either when you're doing this. I run this right down the center gently. This is not a tutorial. This is not how you should do it. This is just how I am doing it. So yeah, don't take this as the gospel when wiring a hose. I'm going to move this around to the other side. Actually, just over here a little bit. Now this here, we'll get all the way up here. This roll of wire is going to have to get set here somehow. Do you want me to uh, put I'm going to need you to do something, yes. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want me to put this on? Uh, you know what? I'm just going to pull it enough here and I'll be fine, brother. Are you sure? I don't yes. I can... No, I'm sure. I'm just going to take this, loop it up here because I want it above that beam, of course. Okay. I am just going to pull it through here. Pull this up through here. And then it's going to go in here. Right there. And as soon as I have enough sticking down out of here, I will clamp it. And then I can work on this. And then I can staple this work my way across. 
that is what I do. There we go. It's not too tight. Now this here will get stapled. It'll come up here with a little extra. Right here. It'll come across here and it'll get stapled across. But for now, it can stay just like this. I will cut this back a bit. And again, I don't want to cut that coating, that, that wire on the inside, I don't want to cut it. Get my finger out of the way there. Walking. Oh yeah, he's creeping around up there. <laughs> I have to get a Moret, a Mars connector, whatever you want to call it. And I have to put those three grounds together. Untangle that, put this ground here, bend that up a little bit here. I want them the same length so when I put the Mars connector on they work. Get this single out here. We're going to single that one out with each other. Put them all three, line them up. Put the connector on. Tighten it up so it can do its thing. There. Now, these guys will go up in here. like so that's the ground down up whoa that felt weird almost went backwards no, that's not good not necessarily no okay oh I have one here I was gonna say okay now I need another box but I have it here so I'm gonna do the blacks up first no special reason I'm just doing it I like to give them a little twist like this here. Give them a little twist like this. I'm trying to show what it looks like. I can't. Sorry. I give them a twist and then I bend them like this so they fit up and they're easier. That's all. Now, that's a smaller bit, so I have to change it. Now I'm going to unthread these little guys here. Just so I can get the wire around it. And I bring the wires in from this way. So again, black on brass, white on silver. So there's the black wire. Make sure it is going to tighten up the proper way. Put it like this, see when I turn this screw, it turns this way so it'll tighten it up. I hold the wire with my thumb so it tries not to unravel. There we go. Now I will tighten that up later with a screwdriver. That's one, and then I will do this one the same here. This is the other black, it goes right beside it, both on the brass. Again, I'm no expert at this, but I have done a few of them. Now, I'm gonna wrap this this way. And I pull these out so they're not tangled up with each other. And again, I give them a little bend like this so I can fit them in. I find it easier now. I'll just give this a little turn here. Put this like this, because that screw turns this way. There. Now, I'm gonna turn this one again. And then I give it a bend like this. So when I turn it, it fits in just like this. Boom. 
pull that through a bit. I'm gonna run it underneath that one just to make it behave. It didn't want to stay where I wanted it to. There we go. Now, is that a smaller one or a large one? That's a large one. I'm gonna unthread this. This as well. So now this wire will run off to the other light, obviously over there. I will bend these up a little bit so they're not in the way. I will bunch them together. And then I will just twist them up in there so they fit nicely, making sure that the holes line up with the screws. And I always check to make sure before I bend those, but you, hey, look at that one, fit perfect. So it hasn't got, it hasn't got bent in the shipping process, wherever they come from. too much. There we go, good enough. I'll back it off just a little wee bit just in case. Nope, better not do that. Or else when I unthread the bulb, see that's a little loose. It's trying to turn. If I ever get a bulb plate in there, it'll unthread on me. That's good enough. So I'll put another light bulb in there. I'll staple this run across there and then I will hook another one up over there. See, that's cracking up there and making noises, but... No, that was me, I think. That was you, was it? I think I stepped on something oh, that cracked. No, okay. I was worried maybe it was that light receptacle. No, I, I'm pretty sure it was what I stepped on. Because sometimes those little plastic light receptacles will make noise. They'll crack a little bit after you walk away, if they're too tight. No, it wasn't this. No, or else it would have made noise when I did that. You gotta be kidding me. Is this a damaged one? Nope, nope. And see, that's why sometimes you start it in, you go to back it off, and if it's jammed, and if this isn't too tight, you'll unthread this whole white piece. So that's why I like to uh, tighten those little plastic light fixtures up snugly. Snug as a bug in a rug. You got it, mm -hmm. you got it. So we're going to carry on here, folks, and uh, we'll show you what it's like once we get the other one done. All right, so we got three of them hooked up. We got that one, you see in this one here, and then we hooked this one up here as well. And I can see that's a brighter bulb over there. So I got to look at the package. These are white. These are kind of yellowy. So those do give a brighter bulb, a brighter light. Now I have that one up there. I don't have it hooked up yet. Here, I'll show you what it's going to look like here. If you can hold that, Heather. Yep. I will plug this one in up here. It'll give you a rough idea of how bright it's going to be in here. I'll move this over to, uh, let's go about here somewhere. That's not exactly where it's going to be. It's going to be higher, obviously. So it's going to make it appear as though it is dimmer. Is that going to be a bright enough basement to move around? What do you think, Heather? Bright enough? Oh, yeah. I think so. Is it hard to see me still though? No, you can see just, you just fine. Yeah. So that's how it'll be with our four bulbs in the basement. Now you know once we're hooked up to the grid, I will probably get some better bulbs. We'll probably get some of the, the, the brighter ones like that instead of these dark dingy ones. But I bet that's <laughs> sucking our power down, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it will be, yep, yeah, for sure. No, not really, no. It's not? No, we were at 11.7 a while ago and we're still at 11.7 volts. Oh. Can you see that? Oh, I thought we were at 11.8. No, come on up here. Yeah, but it dropped. It dropped right when I was done wiring. I checked it was 11.7. Oh, it's okay. still at 11.7. So we are probably going to start the generator up with that battery charger up and charge our batteries. What is in this? Well, that's garbage. That's garbage. That's good. That's all our little <coughs> insulators. So. Anyways, we're not going to wire up the other one tonight. Uh, this one here sure makes a difference with the other one when it's hooked up. It does, yep. Yeah. Check this out. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. Yep. Makes a bit of a difference, eh? Sure does. But it's a lot larger, right? It is. 
But even at that, even without that, I would have no problem seeing down here. No. There's no law stating I can't put larger bulbs in here later. That's true. Because I'm probably going to. Because I'm getting I'm just old that way. And I didn't want to recess them too far in the ceiling. I've experienced when you recess them in the ceiling, these beams get in the way and the light doesn't show as much. And if we put a drop ceiling in, which we may do someday, I don't know, we'll put a drop ceiling maybe to hide the plumbing and stuff. We're going to move those down a bit maybe. And I left enough wires that I can move it down and if I have to, I'll move it over to give me more, more space so I can change that later if I have to. But anyways, for now, that's how bright it is in here. And you've seen how I hooked those lights up. I will show you here how they look. Hope you can see that. Maybe hard, but anyways, that's how I looked it. That's how I hooked it. I left enough wire outside the box. I left a little loop outside here. Not much, just a little bit in case I ever need it. Same on this side. I left a little bit up there just in case I ever need it. I'm gonna step over this cord I have around here. And then here as well, I left a little bit up there as well. And same as over here, I left a little loop up there too, just in case I need it. And then it stapled along here. I didn't put it as tight as like you folks suggested. I just, I didn't do a hard 90, I just left it like that. And then right here. And then it'll run down and it'll get hooked up into a light right here. And I left lots to wire that in. So that's how it is looking in it. It is, as you can see, Pretty much totally dark out well it is totally dark outside and that's how bright it's looking in here with these four bulbs so we're slowly getting there so now what i will do is i will run from the panel we have four uh so i can put six i can put six um plugins six outlets on this because i have four bulbs you're allowed 10 in total 10 or 12 in total Maybe 12. I'm not sure, maybe it's 10. I'm gonna check though. I'm gonna look at the rules on, online and I'll know I found that PDF file uh, on the new codes there a while back and I uh, will take a look at that. So anyways, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna like this I think we're, once it's hooked up. We're gonna, we brought the planer back so we can- You gotta talk louder, baby, I don't think We I brought the planer back too, so maybe we can get some- uh, uh, Planing done? Yeah, for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we brought the planer back, folks. So we can start doing so we can start doing some live edge trim and work on the cupboards. That's what, that's what I was trying to say. I was trying to remember the word for trim. Yeah, I know. So I, I, left like, you, so we can, uh, I left you hanging there. I was waiting. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's why I said we're plane. We're going to do that. Yeah. Some of that too. Yes, but I think tomorrow though, what we're going to do is. Uh, finish this up here, this, this light here. And then I will run, we'll run our switches. We'll put our switch boxes here for light switches. We'll run the plastic conduit up there and we'll drill our holes across there. And we will put our light switch up there as well. And then we can do some, I can't hear you, babe. And then we can do some of that live edge trim. Yes. Maybe. Soon. Soon. <laughs> Won't be right away though. <laughs> Yeah. I know you're pushing that live edge trim here, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was more pushing for the um, more pushing for us to do the door front. Work on the door front yeah. for the cabinet. Well, we have some wood over there drying out, so maybe once we get this wired, we will start doing some more door fronts. Um, if this blizzard ever stops, we will go to the we'll go back into our woodlot and we'll bring out some dead pine and we'll mill that up mm -hmm. and let it dry in here as well. I, I want to do some wiring in here so we don't have extension cords run everywhere. Yeah. Because that's getting that's getting hard on the, you know, it doesn't take much and we're going to be down on the ground if we trip on one and it's not looking forward to that. How many times a day do I trip on Yeah. That? Oh, tell them too, the water stopped coming in through that. It did, yeah. It stopped coming in through there. So once it's vacuumed up, there'll be no more water coming in. Yeah. It, it was just you know a lot of snow and stuff a lot of moisture melting but we're going to dig that up next year anyways and we're going to fix that we're going to cement those openings over because we're not going to use those openings we're not building a garage on the side of the house and we're not building a greenhouse on now either so <clears throat> that's what we're going to do mm -hmm. anyway yeah so that's a that's a little chore for next year anyways 
we are going to end this video now, folks. And I just want to show you how the wiring was going. So anyways, you folks take care and we'll talk to you maybe tomorrow. Bye-bye.